Hi, today we're going to build a file upload inside of Toddle and we're going to learn the principles of uploading files inside of HTML and JavaScript while doing it all visually. So let's get started because today is very exciting because we're going to geek out on the principles of clean web development, especially managing files because most of those no code tools do the work of managing files for you. Toddle gives you the great benefit of not doing a single thing about files for you. So you keep the the you know the customizability on how you want to manage your files now it has pros because you learn the principles of development now the downside is that if you don't know much about how to handle files in ordinary development you feel a little bit lost and you know most of the tools i use including wist handled the file upload part for you they had some magic on the back end Toddle doesn't have the magic on the back end. Toddle really is a framework, I think, for developers, but that lets you do those things visually. So as long as you understand the principles of web development, you're going to build great stuff with it. If you don't understand the principles, file upload may get into your way. But this video here is to solve all the confusion about file upload because after this video, you will think like a developer. You will go into this video as a no coder and you will come out as a senior software developer. Maybe not, maybe junior, but uh, after that, you'll get the principles and you'll understand why it actually works the way it works. So let's get right started. And if you want to learn even more about the principles, join the membership. <laughs> So we start just by adding a diff block in here. And now you may ask yourself, why the heck do we start a file uploader with a diff block? Because in total, we have this great feature. We just click on the diff block and go to attributes and go on tag and change this to input. And now we have an unstyled input field. And then we can just go to attributes just like that. And we change it to file. Boom. And now we have our input. What we now want to do is we want to like register the file that we upload on that input. So, and we want to then log it to a variable. So the first step is when we want to upload the file to our backend, right? We need to map the input field here with a variable. So we're going to create a variable that we just call file. And we start it ideally as an empty string. Now we just let that variable lay for a little bit because we're going to go right back to it after we did some other things. Now, before we continue with uploading the file to the database, we want to understand the principles of how a file upload works. So let's go to events and let's go to the input event and let's look at input and let's just lock something to the console to understand the principles. And we want to look at the event because when I upload something in here on input, the input has an event and that contains all the data that is attached to the input. So let's go on play and let's go on inspect and let's go on the console and don't get scared of the code. It's not much code, <laughs> but I just want to upload a thumbnail here. And now you see that we got some data in here. So if I expand, you see is trusted true, uh, bubbles true, but we see this thing called target. And in this target um, information, in this target list, I can collapse it and there's a lot of data, right? But you will see that as we scroll, we see in this target, this thing called files. And in this thing called target, we have this thing called files. And this is here where our file is located, our file object. We wanna get that but we don't want to go through all the hassle. So we need to do one more step. We go on input and in our formula here where we log it, we click on target. Now let's see what's happening if we click on target. Let's go on play and let's inspect. Now, if we go on the console and clear it and upload our file, it seems like we made three steps back because now we just get HTML sent back, but we're actually doing the right thing. Because remember, we had target and under target, there was files. So now if we just add target, we just get the HTML for some reason. But if we try to get using the get filter, because 
we try to get something. That's why we use the get filter. <laughs> we try to get files because remember, originally we had target and under target, there was a branch called files. We didn't see it if we just tried to return the target for some reason. We don't need to know why. We can go into more complexity if you want, but it's not needed. We just know if we try to re return the target, we may expect that we get an array or an object with information which we don't get. But we just assume that we would be getting that and that we don't have an error. We need to have good faith. And that we now try to go into this object, this data, piece of data, that the target and go into the target and look for the list item called files because this is where our files are. So we have the whole event. In the event, we have target and in the target, we know we have our file data. So we have the target list and in the target list, the list item is files. So now we try to get the files. And now if we inspect, open the console again, and let's go on play and upload a file just like that. We're going to see that I get a list of my files. Now, I only want to get the first file, this one here, right? So what I can do is I go in here. If you want to send multiple files, um, you're, you're mostly done with it, but I'll, but I'll make a separate video on that. We add a plus and we add another get filter. Now you could do it all in the same one, but I like to keep it simple and now we're just going to add an array and we just target the first item, which is zero because arrays always start with zero, right? The, so the first item in JavaScript is zero. The second is one, like it's always minus one. And now that is it. We add the array. We do another get filter to get the first one only. So now if I go and inspect the elements, go on the console, click on the file upload, upload my thumbnail. Now we're going to see that I get the file object and this is and this is the data that I want to send to my backend. This is all I need. This is the file. But now <laughs> sending that to the backend is a whole headache by itself, but it doesn't have to be if you know how to do it. So let's go to Xano and let's go to add endpoint. And just for simplification purposes, let's just create a custom endpoint, right? And let's call this uh, upload. And you can add more data to it if you want. And we can just do a post request. It should be a post if we send a file and we have it upload just like that. Now we need to receive an input of a file resource. So I scroll down and I go to storage and in storage, I see file resource. And I can call this file. Now we only receive a single one. So we have a single one checked and now we receive a file resource. Now we publish it. And now let's configure something where we can actually call this API. We don't configure the backend yet to handle it, to turn it into a link. We're going to configure it first. So now I copy the endpoint URL. I go to toddle and now I go to the API section. I click outside of the canvas. And I go to the API section and I just add my API in here, right? And we call this upload. And then we do a post. Now we just let, let it lay for a moment because in order now to do this API call, we would need to send the file data that is in the input. And in order to do that, you know that we, we need to have it in a variable. Otherwise we can't send the data through the API to our backend. So we need to go to the input on input event and we just copy this formula here. Oops. Let's go in here and let's, let's copy the formula and let's go to the, the file variable and let's paste our formula in here. Boom. Now we can remove the console lock. And now when I upload a file, as you can see, let's upload a photo and we go on the variable. We see that it contains a file just like that. We have data in here. Boom. We have a file object. Now we need to send that file object to our API. And ooh, we just went responsive. <laughs> so now we need to send it to our API and that will be fun. <laughs> because right now it is set to application JSON. 
and we need to send and we need to update the content type. There are multiple content types. There is text plane, application JSON, um, and you know, application X www form URL encoded, but we need to use multi-part form data. So we copy multi-part form data, we go to Toddle and we change the content type. If we send files, we need to use multi-part form data. And then we need to send the file data. So we see we have the file path that we need to receive as an input into our API. And we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go back to Toddle and I'm going to go to my body. I go on FX and I add an object. And the key will be file because keep in mind in Xano, we need to receive the key for file and that will contain the variable containing the file as you can see right here. Now we need to make sure that this API call is not proxied because if it is, if it will be proxied, it's going to mess up the whole file structure because proxied means it's going to go from the computer to Toddle server and Toddle server will call your API. You don't want to have that happening. You want the file upload to be straight from the user's device to your backend. So the file can be transmitted from device to server without having to have a party in the middle because that will just mess up the whole transfer process. So now we got that working and this file upload should work. It should send the file to our backend. So now how about we add a button, right? And on click of this button, right? We are calling our API and now I can add, I can upload a file. Let's upload a screenshot and I can click on the button and that file was sent to that API. And now when I wait a little bit until I get some updates to my request history, I should be receiving um, something. I'm not going to say it's a file yet that we can use, but I just want to, you know, make sure that you get familiar with the principles of web development. So let's try clicking it again. And let's see, how did that API call go? Yeah, we didn't get anything back because, you know, and also we want to have auto fetch off just by the way, don't have auto fetch on. <laughs> so let's reload. And as you can see, we received that in here. So if we look at the input, we see that we received the file as an input, right? Because we have a file resource. So I have the file, I have the name of the file, I have the size of the file, I have the type of the file, it has zero errors, I have the TMP name, and I have the full path of the file. Now that thing is not a file yet. We can't add that to the database. This is not usable because it's show, it's this behind this thing here is a lot of binary data. There is a lot of data behind this thing, right? And this thing itself is not the file. This thing is information that makes the file visible to us. So in order to take this file data visible, I want to do, we can do like, get file data in Xano. I just want to illustrate how web development works. So let's go get, uh, let's go to files here in Xano with our folders. Let's go to storage. Where do they have storage? Storage, file storage. And we want to go to uh, da, 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 da. file resource, get file resource data because I want to show you how the file resource actually looks. Because if you go to your request history, right in here, into your request history, you're going to see, oh, looks cool. Like I got the path and all of that. And you think this is the file. This is not the file. The file is ginormous. So let's just have this be returned file one, right? This will return file one. So we're going to take the input of the file resource a file and we're going to return it as file one. And this will show, this is get file resource data from file. This will make the data that is actually the file visible to us. And now let's upload a file. Let's take a small one, please. And let's click on the button. We wait a little bit and we look at what our API responded. And as, as I expected, Toddle froze because it's a big file it returned. <laughs> so let's reload Toddle. <laughs> we just crashed Toddle because files are not fun. And now my arc is giving up on me. This is exactly why I love files. 
and now it's all glitchy and frozen, but we just returned the file back. Files are big. So now let's look at the request history, what we just did, and let's give it a little bit to show up because it was a big file, right? We just wanna, we just wanna be graceful. Yeah, Xano is always a few minutes behind with their request reporting, but it happens all still in real time. It's just like they're monitoring their analytics, take time to be filtered and like processed and they have to go across the whole country. And <laughs> But let's just wait a little bit because what we're going to see will be very interesting to show how a file really looks because I like to, you know, we're talking here about visual programming. We should understand the principles of programming before we get too visual. Um, it's loading. I hope I hope we return something. <laughs> it's loading since a few while. I hope Xano isn't giving up on us here, but it shouldn't be. Xano is very scalable and powerful. Um, it will probably going to say output too big or something, but I just want to show you how file data looks. If not, I'm just going to do this manually in in uh, in Xano. If it doesn't if it doesn't show up now in the next few seconds. Yeah, it, it seems like, but we saw total froze, so we got file data back. Uh, it seems like Xano may not be looking, may not be showing us so big things, but let's just upload that in Xano in their UI. I just want to show you how file data looks. It's taking a long time to load. This is how file data looks. Here you go. This is how file data looks. So it's a bit, it's a little bit. Look at that. Of course that breaks your front end. We got like 4 million more lines more. Oh no, it's, uh, yeah, we got 4 million more lines. You wanna continue for another 15 minutes till I showed you the whole file data? That's a file. That's why sending files is such a pain. <laughs> Cause it's big, it's 4 million, 4 million more characters left. <laughs> Look at that, that's a file. And our backend is, 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 is capable of handling this and converting this into a link and storing this. So it's a lot. Now I don't wanna get you scared and we don't even need that function. I just wanted to show you how a file data looks. So let's just publish this and let's do something that is usable to us. We wanna create metadata. We wanna store this onto our CDN. So we have a link that we can then add to our database. So we go to, um, we want to create an attachment. So I do attachment metadata. Oops, I got to upgrade. Okay, here, create attachment metadata. And the value is the input of the file resource. And we return this as attachment. This is the metadata. And this is what you will be able to add to your database. So now we have that here. And now we call this again. Let's run this again. Let's hope that Toddle doesn't break this time because <laughs> we sent 4 million plus lines to it. Let's upload a screenshot. Let's run this. Okay, I think we ran it enough. And let's look what the request responded to us. It said fatal. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give that too much of a Oh yes, of course it's fatal. It's of course, because we define attachment and we try to return file one that doesn't exist. We have to return the attachment. So we have to publish this here. And we need to go to Toddle and now let's give it another try. And now we see, hey, here's your path, here's your file. Now that file was updated to our Xano database. And let me show you if I, duplicate this, right? And I would go to um, my library and I would go to public files. You will see, oh, let's hope this is not something important. Uh, you will see that, here you go. Here is my photo that I uploaded and it's on my Xano 
instance on my back end. And by the way, this is no advertisement, but this is the beautiful interface of my community. If you want to join, we have daily office hours. And now we just also have just added a job board, by the way, that as you can see in the photo here, very cool because members want to hire members. But you get like total tutorials. You get you have an ask for help form. You get daily office hours. You can see all the recordings for the daily office hours. Um, we have a video exchange where you send a Loom video with a problem and you get a Loom video back with a solution, right? We have total mini tools, with mini tools. We have courses and the best thing, daily office hours that really keeps you accountable and keeps you motivated into just continuing that journey of learning about it. And we have a link, right? Where you can just, this is, the, this is the file link of our CDN. So now we want to construct the link because the way we return it to Toddle is just as a path. And maybe we want to showcase this on the front end, like as an image, or we want to give the user a link they can share with people or something like this, right? Like uh, we transfer. So what we could do is we could add it to a database that, that, that is what will give us the link, or to understand how paths work, we take the root domain of our Xano server. This is how we reach our Xano server. Because if I were to put this in here, I'm calling my Xano server, as you can see. May not be the best idea to show this. Um, <laughs> uh, all my endpoints are authenticated. I'm good. <laughs> so, and I have middleware. Boom. So now what we wanna do is we want to create a variable and we can call this file link to illustrate what we're trying to do here. We have the file link and we take the attachment and we go to dot path, right? I think that's dot path. Let's just try this. Let's upload, for example, a photo in here and let's go to stop and debug in Xano, go to the attachment, run this and we see I get that, I copy it and then I just go to the attachment variable and I go to subpath, I define the subpath and I make sure that I only take the path of the file. Now let's run this and now we should only get the path of the file. Yeah, oh, I need to return the file link, right? Here we go and I need to go to stop and debug and make sure I only return the file link. That should only give us the path. Here we go. And now we need to merge this with the URL. So let's go back to our Xano URL. And the main URL after the first slash, this is our server URL. And now we want to, this is attachment.path. We can keep it in our mind. We put our Xano URL in here and we are going to do concat. Concat, this is meaning it's taking two strings and smashing it together and the value to concatenate will be attachment.path. We don't need to add a separator. We go on save, we publish, and now we see that we will get a full link back and we can copy that link and we can paste it in here and we're going to see that that image works. And this is, by the way, the course that I uploaded today to the membership site where you have a two, uh, two hours step-by-step -step course how to set up SMS authentication inside of your total project using Xano. It's super simple and if you have any questions about anything that was in the course, just join office hours and we get that solved the same day. So let's go back to Toddle. Uh, let's no, let's go back to Xano. And now we just remove our stop and debug. And for this example, we build something like WeTransfer. So we want to return our link so people can share that link with friends and family or whatever. So we have that working. And now uh, we just go back here. And when we would rerun this API call, right, we will say blah, blah, it will give us an error because we can test this just by turning auto fetch on and off. We need to test this inside of the application, just FYI. So let's go in here. Let's select my thumbnail again. Let's send this to the backend. And now we will see that I will get the link back. Beautiful. So it worked, it's uploaded. So now what I can do is I could add an input field just like this and it could say like the placeholder would be 
file link. Just like that, I can create a variable. I will call this link, Ooh, link, just like that. And then I go to my button when I call the API, on click, and then on success of the upload, I'm going to set my link variable to the API response that contains the link, so dot data in here. And then I go to my input and I bind it to the link variable. So now when I upload my file, right, let's upload a file, I click the button and I'm going to get my file link. And as you can see here, I could do with that link whatever I want. And here you go, this is my file link. Hey, <laughs> and now let's make the UI like a little bit nicer because what you can do is if you want to have the file upload be very beautiful, like magnificent, you can do something very cool. So we have the submit button here. Let's first of all call this upload. Upload. And we want to make sure that we add a div block in here, a div block. And this div block should be here. This will be our new file upload. And we're going to style it beautifully like Dropbox. So we're going to make sure that this has a width of 90%, a width of 90%. Here we go. And a height of 25 rem, uh, 20 rem. A 15 rem, 15 rem, and I'm going to give it a background that is like gray 800, and I give it like rounded borders of 15 pixels, just like that. And I go to Reloom icons, and I look for some file icons. Uh, that looks great. Let's copy like the 60, uh, the 80 pixel version for Figma. Let's go in here, paste it in here. And let's center this. Here you go. And now I will be able to upload the file. Here we go. We have that SVG. And now I can also add like an uploader. So I could go to Clot. And I can say, let's see make an SVG animation for an uploading spinner using CSS. Here we go. Let's create like a loading spinner using CSS. Now it's generating the code. And can we say it should it should inherit the current text color that should be black? Oh, it's supposed to say black. <laughs> You know what? How about we go to a library where we go CSS, ah, let's go to library, CSS spinners. Here, here you go, it's pure CSS spinners. That looks good. So let's copy the CSS. Let's go to toddle. Let's add a div block in here and let's add a style block. Let's go to the style CSS. Let's paste this in here. Here we go. And then let's go to the div and let's copy the HTML. Let's paste it in here. And now we have our loader. So we have our beautiful loader. And now we wanna base those loaders based on if the API is loading or not. So I go to SVG and I go on show and I go on upload 
and I can go on is loading and I want to add not because right now it's not loading so I want to show this and then when it is loading I need to go to show and I go to upload and is loading if is loading equals true it will show the loader so if I oops I think I did it on the wrong thing I think I did it on the part of the loader so let's copy this let's delete it let's go to this is the loader yes the diff holding the loader let's go and show and let's go to upload is loading now this will be showing now if it's loading boom so now when I upload a file in here and I click on upload it will be loading and then we will get the response of the link in here look at that so I will have the link then able to be shown to the user so we want to make it a little bit nicer so what we can do is we can remove uh, the button so we can go on the on click event to call this API and then on success set the link we can just copy this and then remove the button and go on the input and just do this on the event of uploading it so now when I upload a file it's going to load and then it's going to return me the link of that file so we can also do that to make it like very fancy and then I want to take this diff and turn this to be a label from an HTML level and it still needs to be flex center but it needs to be a label and then I go to my input field and I give it an ID of uploader I do uploader make sure to copy it and then I go on my label and I add the attribute for and I paste uploader so now when I click on the label it's going to up open the uploader and then now what I can do is I can just take the uploader and move it into the label and take the uploader the file input and go to layout none and now I have a nicer uploader where I don't have this ugly HTML element that I can style anyway. Now we got that. And I want to make sure we have like a maximum width of 25 rem just to make it nice. So it scales. Look at that. And now I can just have this input here. And I can just go in here and add like a diff in here that is absolute and eclipse to zero left, zero right, zero top, zero bottom. So it's full screen over here. And we can give it a background color of also gray 800. I paste my input field in here, make it centered, right? I make sure the width is like 100%. And I just give it like side padding of one rem and one rem and I can give like the field a li little bit darker color here and then I just go to the label holding everything together and I make sure that I go to layout and I clip everything so I clip and I clip now we got our rounded borders back and now I can add a heading small one I can I can say here is your file link here's your file link here is your file link let's copy the input let's paste it in here and I can add like a cool uh, icon to it so let's go to the heading here and let's go to link link and I can look at cool link icons let's take the 16 pixel one let's paste it into the h4 let's make it go flex to the side let's give 0 0.25 rem uh, 35 and let's make the weight of this 300 or let's make it 400 that looks beautiful and now I can just uh, go in here and give it like a gap of one rem 
so they we have some space in here so now i have my file link in here that you know then i could even add a button in here that says copy link and i can go to relume and i can look for copy that one looks cool let's take this one let's go to toddle and let's make this go to the side let's make the center and let's go to size and make 14 for the text we make it white and we give it like a, maybe like a light blue that looks very cool like a very light blue and then we make this like a dark blue text i think that it gives a very nice very nice touch so we do 0 0.25 top and bottom and that looks very clean i think it looks beautiful i really like it so now i can go on this button and i can get the event to on click copy to clipboard and now i base this on the variable that contains the link already and now i see the link in here and oh we got to remove the hover a little bit so let's go on styling and let's go on edit remove the hover so now i can copy on here and as you can see i can now paste my file link in here beautiful so now we have like a little we transfer already so we got this working now we need to show this you know after the api was successful so we can actually base this on the length of the of the file link because when it was successful it's setting the file link right now there's no file link so let's just reload toddle and let's go oops no not intended i need to go here so when i copy that okay cool i can also click outside of it to upload a file feel free to change that in your project <laughs> but uh, what we want to do here is we basically want to take this div element here and i want to go to attributes and i go to style and i add an if statement in here and then if the file and then we go to size so we take the length right now and then we do equals or is greater than so right now the size is zero and, the, and it should be greater than zero so meaning we actually have a link in that variable that will be right now false so if it's false i want this to be opacity uh, if it's true i want it to be opacity because then will be the true equation i want it to be opacity one z index nine 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 okay and then if it is false i want it to be opacity zero colon z index semicolon minus one semicolon here we go and now i want to add a transition to it so i go on styling transitions i make sure i take all and then now here we go I upload my file, I click on here, upload my thumbnail, and now it's loading. And oops, the link. Let's just look at this again. Let's go here. I may have a typo. And I have the size of file. Interesting. Uh, The link did not seem to be set. Let's look at the link, but it is set. Interesting. So maybe we just do a more robust thing. We do show modal and we start show modal to be false. I like just, you know, tying state to those. Show modal to be false. And now we go in the modal and we actually base it on show modal. Right now it's false. So if it's false, it is zero and minus one. And then here it will be. And at the end, actually at the nine, 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 I need to add a semicolon. That may be actually the whole thing why it didn't work to be honest, but let's just still use the variable for state. So now we have that working. And now we need to go on our file element. 
on our input element and we need to look at the event and on success we also want to go to show modal and we need to turn this to false. Uh, no, we need to turn this to true. So now when I upload my file, it will load and then we will get our link that we can copy. And this is our CDN link. Now I can copy that link and I can paste it in here and oops, did it copy it? Interesting, let's look at the copy action again. I know copy and paste is like a little bit off now in Toddle, it, but it it is doing the right thing, so I think it should work. Interesting, maybe it ne I need to try it out of sight of the editor. So I click on here, I upload my file, and now I can copy my link and yes, that copied my link. So it's just the toddle editor that's messing a little bit around with it. Also, what I saw is the SVG in here um, did not seem to work if I click on the SVG. So I maybe want to wrap it in an element that is a div. And then I want to apply the show formula on that div that holds this, just like that. And then I want to make this div into a label with the attribute for, and I go on my input and I copy this and I go on the div holding the item. So now that when I go on here and click on the icon, uh, it should still open it. But the issue is I think it takes it as text because if I click outside of it, it works. If I click on the icon, I can click, but it selects it like text. So what we need to do, I assume, is we need to go to the SVG here, and maybe we need to change like the, the, the cursor. So we just do default, and we go on the label, and we go to cursor, and we make sure that this is default. So now when I hover over here, Interesting. I need to go to the path as as well. So I need to go to the path and I go cursor and I go default. That should work. And let's just make sure that when we go to the label, we also have the cursor of default so it all links great and we can click it. And that is interesting. Oh, I think it is because we are having that input field in here. So maybe... Um, what we should be doing is we should be setting um, the the input fields um, show and hide based on if a link is available and if the model should be shown and then we can add a little delay to, to hide it. So what we can do is we can go to show and we can base it on if show model is true or false. So now we can click it with without issues, yes, and then when we see it here, we will see it fades in and there is no glitchiness. So we just hide this element if the link is not ready yet so we don't have any confusion with the cursor. So now we got this and this is very cool. We ideally now want to turn this into a component. If we want to use it inside of a page, we would then transfer the variables, kind of like extract them and the API call and then we would work with events. But if you just need to have it in one page, I highly encourage just building it in a page. Um, you know, ideally you want to use components and you want to work with events and you want to use events to then communicate to the other parts. Like this is like React. You build a component. The component have a, has a life of itself. It has events and it has contacts and it communicates to the main page. So the main page has only a few API calls and the main job of the main HTML page is to talk and to facilitate with the components. And you use attributes um, to talk to the components and you use events to listen what the components are telling you and you expose context for more advanced functionalities. And then you have like workflows within the components. But this is just a very page-based approach that we did today just to understand the principles of how to do this. But I still want to encourage you to use components. But when you're just starting out with something, 
the idea is to simplify it as much as you can, you know, just get the principles going. And then once you got the principles going, you can take the principles and move, you know, to deepen your knowledge and to move into more components, right? Because when you start learning JavaScript, you, you know, you don't, you, you start like with if else statements and you don't start with, uh, I don't know, like with, with the most complicated thing. Like you don't start with file uploads <laughs> <laughs> like we do today here. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And now let's just enjoy this file upload one more time. Look at this. I upload my file. Here you go. I select the file. It loads. And I got the link and I can copy it and I can paste it in the browser. Let's see if it still works. And here's the file. Beautiful. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And if you want to get more um, support in building your things in total. Uh, and if you want to benefit from daily office hours, from great courses, I would be super happy to see you in our office hours and in the community. Uh, you get great templates, you get courses, uh, you get just like a great community and daily office hours where you can ask your questions in Zoom meetings if you have roadblocks, but also get a head start if you're just starting out. Actually, let me show you how the community and how the membership set looks from the inside, just to get an idea. So we have a course here that is like, hi, it's like one, almost two hours on how to set up authentication in Toddle using SMS. Great if you are like mobile first, you can then also upload like Damien just did like a Loom video and get a Loom video back to help you solve some of the things. You can ask questions and, you know, get responses. Um, and then you have another course in here, how to build an AI micro SaaS in Toddle. I just did that like a day ago. It's also almost two hours. And then we have another course here, a day ago uploaded on uh, the Toddle logic basics. That's like about Hi. an hour. Yeah, shortly, a little, one minute less than an hour. We have cool events, like we have the Frankenstein app migration with Lee, where he was like moving from Wiz to Toddle and we kind of like did like an open heart surgery Life. <laughs> also, the thumbnail is very cool. And then we have like the office hours. They're almost like, oh. sometimes they're like two hours, you know, and there's so much value in the office hours. You just like, you learn exciting stuff. And can we move? Like you do, you learn great stuff from the office hours and there's a ton of yeah. value. There are almost like one, one to, we also had Ray as a guest, Ray Deck from State Change, the legend in Xano. We also had him at a, as a, where, where it was actually a scheduling mistake. He wasn't really a guest. I kind of like was a guest in his, but he had his office hours where I was the guest and I had my office hours, but it was all at the same time. So I was a guest at the same time at his office hours and he was a guest at my office hours. So it was like a joint venture thing. Very cool. I'm actually doing now more with Ray together. We have like the duo, me and Ray. Like now, I think next week, um, I'm going to send out an alert where me and Ray are having uh, like whist and toddle office hours together. So uh, we're not holding back on great content. Uh, and yeah, we got like great stuff. We got, and this is just a YouTube video. Like don't think I just post like things that are already public in the community. Everything in the community um, is only for the community. But uh, this video was just like, cause people ask like, where can I find that link? So I just post it in there. We have our office hours in here. We have templates for WIST, also for Toddle. And we have more office hours. We have Stripe elements. It's also coming for Toddle. I should have that up Monday. Uh, or it, you probably see this Monday, so, or I don't know when you see this. I should have it up. The moment you see it, I would be either working on it or already have it done. And then we have tiny MCE and we got just great stuff in this community. It's, it's packed with great content and very valuable educational material. And I just saw, oh, I just got a new post inside of here. Oh, very cool. I just got a new post from Damien. So I got a new comment. What's going on here? Okay, got to respond to that. Uh, but yeah, so it's a wonderful, great community. I would love to see you on the inside. Uh, 
And yeah, thank you so much for watching this. If you want to deepen your knowledge, go to nocodeprocode.com. The link is also in the description. I can't wait to see you on the other side. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And I hope you're doing exciting file uploads. Let me know what you're going to build with file uploading capacity inside of Toddle. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.